Hey Richard, how you doing, mate? Hey, how you doing? You're right, Danny. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so I guess the the obvious first question: What was it that convinced you to sign for Sky? I mean, there was a number of different parties interested, um, as I'm aware. So what what was the crucial crucial factors? I think one of the main things is I've had um, a fair share of my fights on Sky, and I've built um, a type of a small fan base, and I thought it doesn't make sense to continue that that kind of journey on the platform. It's a massive platform. The numbers, you know, they speak for themselves. And I just feel like it's it's perfect. It's perfect for me and for my image, what I represent. And yeah, that's, I just, I think they're the best, best place for boxing at the minute. Would this move have been possible if you were still with your previous management team? Because it looks like at the moment, certainly, Dillian is tied to the zone. Um, would you have been able to, to fight on Sky if you were still with them? I highly doubt it. Um, that's because where wherever Dillian goes, everybody else goes. And that was always the format from the beginning. You know, when Dillian moves, we move. And it's it's a thing where I got to a point where I need to take more control of my career. You know, some people are fine with that. And I'm being kind of, uh, I don't know what how to put it, but just kind of babied in a way. So I just thought, you know, let me, I need to take care, um, um, take control of my career and make the decision myself. So one of the best things I did was to go go off and do my own thing. And just finally, when are we likely to see you back out and what sort of level of opponent would you like to face? I'm ready to face whoever, to be honest. Um, I've got this opponent now scheduled for the 2nd of October and that's gonna, that information is going to go out um, today. And it's a it's a decent level opponent, decent for you know how long I've been out for, etc. So um, yeah, we move from there once we get the W. Brilliant! Well, I'm delighted for you. Best of luck. Thank you very much, Danny. Richard, I'm sure you've been licking your lips watching certainly at least the domestic yeah, scene yeah. Um, over the past couple of years. What what have you made of it? Not being able to kind of get in there yourself with the rest of the guys you know some potential rematches there which might crop up at some point but what's it been like for you to have to take a, a seat back and watch the rest of the guys mix it's, it was really really frustrating especially in the beginning um i would say pre-covid just slightly pre-covid um I, there was an announcement made and some some talk about uh, tommy mccarthy fight for the european before me and i thought Hold on a second. What, the, what is going on here? Something has got so, somebody has got something wrong, and I don't. I do not have a clue how that happened. I beat both of the guys, and they both became um, European champions before me. It did not make any sense. And somebody is definitely at fault. I don't know whose incompetence that was, but I made a call on um, social media, if you can recall. Twitter and on Instagram, I said, this I should be fighting for any of these guys. I beat them both. Like, what the, what's going on here? And that's when that's when I knew things have to change. Things have to change ASAP. And that's when I started to, I sat down, I got my pen um, pad out, and I started to just literally just take control of my career and plan ahead, uh, make the decisions which have been um, quite, quite beneficial to up to date. And here we are now. Now we're, we're walking alone on our own two feet and got full control with competent people around us to do the job that they need to do. Just before I follow up on that, Richard, can I just check, Danny, is your screen frozen as well? Oh, it's back, never mind. <laughs> um, Richard, yeah, so just to follow up on that, mate, um, obviously with those other guys, I'm sure you'll want to get in there with the likes of, you know, Chris Billum Smith, who now holds that the European title um, amongst the others. They're with different promoters, you know, Chris, Tommy, you know, Lawrence O'Coley. And then you look at Frank Warren, he's got other guys signed up in the division as well. Are you confident that there won't be an issue with regards to the promotional side of things to try and make those fights for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm confident. I think Sky have an amazing approach. And Boxer, they, they, they've done amazing. You know, they've conducted this whole venture. Uh, one of the great things that I've noticed is everybody at Sky, they are all on board like i'm talking about from all levels and they really want to make their mark on this on this game and this industry in this field and and everybody's is ready to do whatever they need to do to make things happen 
and let's just let's just keep it plain and simple. Money talks. So you know, money is money. If the money's talking, then of course we're going to make these fights happen. No problem. I don't have a problem with fighting any of these guys. I've done it before. So let's touch on that. You come back October 2nd. What is the plan for you beyond that before you are back in challenging for a European title or, or something better than that? Straight away. ASAP. Like, I, to be honest, I, I wanted to take a, a different fight for this fight. And um, we spoke with the team and stuff. I think things were already done. We had the contract already done. So it was really difficult to change things. So we just ran with it. But we wanted to take something to get us ranked up in the in some of the boards as well, some of the organizations and and straight going for the kill. Because you know, time waits waits for no man and I'm confident in my ability to do what I need to do in this in this game. Richard, for as frustrating a, an 18 months as this has been for you, it, there's been I've had people reach out to me trying to find out you know where you've been up until you've recently spoke. So just a final one for everybody now waiting to see you get back into the ring. Just kind of a, a last message as to your return and what they should all expect when we see you back. Listen, they know the fans know that I get busy. I get busy, and they know they can be in for an entertainment scrap, entertainment scrap. And you just don't know what you're going to get. It's like kind of surprise. And that's why they're calling for my name. I've received thousands of messages on, on social media. Like, it's been ridiculous. I was, in my head, I was thinking, where were these fans <laughs> prior to when when this lockdown and when Richard went missing? It was, it's weird. But, you know, it's good. It's good to have the support there. It's good to see the interest. And you know what? The interest in the right individual. Because I am coming for the smoke. And nobody is safe. Nobody's safe. I'm telling you. So, shout out to the fans that stuck by me and kept on following just to see what was going on. I appreciate them. And um, we're back on, we're back on, you know, we're back on October the 2nd. Let's get it. Richard, I appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you back, mate. Cheers.